Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from Sweet Cherry Pies who says, Am I the asshole for not telling my boyfriend? I won money 15 years ago. I don't know what I did wrong or if what I did is wrong and I need some advice. I didn't want to post this on my real account because I'd like to be as anonymous as possible. My boyfriend, 35 male and I, 35 female, were discussing finances as we wanted to be on the same page. My boyfriend moved in with me unexpectedly three months ago as his landlord decided to move into the property with his family. We were discussing finances and the topic of how I owned my place came up. I explained I won some money, not a lot, but enough to be able to put myself through nursing school, purchase my home and have some savings back in 2009. and bought my place outright and then rented it out until I moved back into it in late 2018. Obviously, I had some luck on my side as this was right in the middle of the recession, so I got my place for real cheap. He says I deceived him i given him the impression I was a financially well off and that I led him to believe I was more business savvy than I was. I don't know how I did that because I literally work as a nurse and make decent money, fully own my home, fully own my car, have decent retirement plans and decent savings. I'm fairly certain that I'm financially better off than most people I know. He says that he can't trust me anymore and that he was stupid to have listened to my financial advice. But the thing is, I never gave him any financial advice except for telling him not to buy a car that was, in my opinion, unreliable and much too expensive. Did I deceive him by not telling him how I got myself financially stable? For your information, we've been dating for almost a year and a half. Edit. I just had another very weird conversation with him and honestly can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, so he's definitely a gold digger. He asked me how much I have in savings and seemed impressed with how much and then said maybe he reacted too aggressively. Then he asked and told me that he still wants the car I advised him not to get. He hinted at me getting it for him as a birthday present since it's his birthday in early March. I am definitely dumping him. Going to wait till my two sisters and my two brother-in-laws can come over before I break up with him in case he reacts crazy. Edit 2. He's jealous and also resentful. He's ranting about how he would have tripled the money if he had won it. Edit 3. He's saying that my money is wasted on me because I don't make it make money. Apparently, I should have been investing my savings in high-yielding stocks and other shit. For your information, I do get financial advice from a financial advisor. I trust, but I am a risk-averse person, so I would never invest in the manner that this idiot is telling me. Sure, the chance to get a lot of money is there, but so is the chance to lose. Edit 4. He's now on a crazy ramp because I suggested we take a break from this argument because I don't want to ruin my few days off. My god, I can't believe how he's behaving. He thinks he's so clever, but I'm thoroughly disgusted. Oh, it is absolutely over between us. Edit 5. Okay, so I understand him better now. So my house and the property it's on is what led him to believe I was much richer than I am. He assumed I was loaded. So me telling him I actually got lucky pissed him off. Then when he found out how much in savings and assets I have, he perked up and had a change of mind. He's now telling me that with just a quarter of the money, he can show me how to invest on the stock market and make real money. Oh, he's genuinely deluded. So some of the top comments on this one said, not the arsehole, this feels like jealousy on his part so he's lashing out. Out of interest, how long have you two been together? because this kind of information can take a while to disclose. If you were together when you won the money and hid it from him, that might be a different argument. Also, you are financially savvy because you got a windfall and didn't waste it. Well done you. Profile Electronic says he thought you were better off and he could mooch off you in the long run. It always starts with moving in together because some issues in the woman's house is the only logical place. Next, he will lose his job due to circumstances and be unable to find another. He must have already begun throwing hints that he's unhappy at his current job and he's being treated unfairly. Of course, he believes you deceived him because what he thought of as a cushy retirement is looking not so luxurious as he'll only have your nurse's salary to mooch off of. AJ Strauss says not the arsehole and I see a lot of red flags here. 
sounds like you were very responsible about how you spent your windfall, securing yourself a home, paying for your education, and putting the rest aside in savings. I'm not sure what about that he's questioning. My concern is that he might have thought you were very wealthy and was hoping you would be his sugar mama. Is he only in this for the money? And a final comment from Archetyping who says not the asshole. Thank God you found this out right now. I'd make him an ex-boyfriend and kick him out. Don't want him to start laying claims to your home's equity after he lives there too long, depending on state and provincial laws on common law partners. He's jealous. He also likely thinks that you are his meal ticket. He's angry over nothing reasonable. One and a half years isn't very long and you don't owe someone the whole I bought this house because I got money from X blah blah blah. So OP did come in with a new update and says I've been repeatedly asked to give an update and here I am. So my sisters and brother-in-laws came over and I asked him to leave. He got very angry and argumentative. While he and I argued my family packed up all his stuff and put it in his car. He didn't have much at mine as most of his furniture and other bigger items were already in storage couldn't believe I'd break up with him over such a little thing. As if he hadn't spent three days yelling and ranting at me. He finally left and is now staying at his parents' house. His parents called me to ask what happened. I explained the situation and they said it was for the best. We broke up. I didn't see him for a few days, but he called and texted a whole bunch. And it was just him flipping between being regretful of his behavior to raging at my audacity and stupidity. And I got a call from Mike, one of his friends, and he asked me what happened because ex-boyfriend was telling people he broke up with me for being a cheater. Apparently, he caught me sleeping with some random dude. I explained the situation to his friend and he laughed, saying he was wondering when he'd bring up his money schemes. So we had a long chat and he told me how my ex had recently lost a lot of money in trading and that's what had him stressed and anxious. It's also what pushed him over the edge. Apparently, he was angry with me for not taking the same risks he takes. He bitched to Mike about me being a risk averse person. Mike told me to move on and to change my locks because my ex apparently had a history of being nasty when dumped. He was right because a few days after that, ex broke into my house and took a shit on my. What? <laughs> I'm gonna start that sentence again. He was right because a few days after that, ex broke into my house and took a shit on my kitchen counter. He was arrested while he was in the process of evacuating his bowels. I obviously changed the codes to my security system so he couldn't get in with the old codes. And by the time he had broken in the back door, police were already on their way. He tried to tell the police that he was my boyfriend and lived in the house, but what resident breaks in the back door of the house and bleeds over the entire hallway and takes a shit on their own kitchen counter? He spent the night in jail and was bailed out the next day by his parents. They called to apologize and I told them to never contact me again. I am also in the process of getting a protection order. I have never dated crazy before and I am absolutely gobsmacked at his insanity. The thought of this dude taking a shit on the kitchen counter is just not leaving my head at all. I'm, I'm struggling to make any other comment because but at the same time, I don't want to downplay the situation because you know, for someone to do that kind of thing, to break in, and, and to do that in the first place is absolutely terrifying that that whole thought process goes through their head that I'm going to break into someone's house and I'm going to take a shit somewhere on the kitchen counter of all places. I mean, the logistics behind that and is blowing my mind at the same time. I'm trying to get my head around the process. I mean, it's either he's a really tall dude and was just able to take a dump there and then or otherwise he had to stand up on the kitchen counter, climb up onto it because... You know, a standard height kitchen counter is pretty, pretty, pretty tall, right? Definitely higher than butt cheek level. And then just dropped a log and then got caught in the process of doing it. Imagine the police walking in on that. Holy shit. And this is after him, this dude complaining about her being risk averse, yet he lost all his money. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? But shitting on the kitchen counter, that's a new one for me. <sighs> anyway, what do you guys make of this situation? Holy moly. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Ovs Not Main from the Petty Revenge subreddit. It does have updates as well. Titled, My half sister wanted to show up in a wedding dress to my engagement party. So I changed the party theme so she would fit right in. My half sister, Heather, and I never really got along. We are both 24. My father left my mother for her mother when we were born. 
and we were born the same month 20 days apart. It has always been weird. It doesn't help that Heather's mum hates me and my mum. By extension, Heather and I didn't have the best relationship. She has always tried to one-up me, even though we both have similar, a similar economic background. I can give examples of this, but for the sake of the word limit, I won't write them here. So now my fiance and I got engaged last month and had our engagement party this Saturday. We'd planned it originally as a casual formal event. Nice dresses, but not I'm going to the Met Gala Ball nice. More like we're going to a good restaurant nice. Anyway, my cousin hits me up saying she has to show me something. It was the picture of the dress Heather was going to wear. OP added this picture and said with it, this is what the dress looked like approximately. It was a bit shorter and a bit less puffy. The rest is almost identical. Opie continues saying, This dress, Jesus Christ, it can only be described as opulent. It was long and white, strapless with sewn-in crystals and golden accents. I'm pretty sure it's a wedding dress, but I can't be 100%. This made me really mad. So I decided, fuck that. I started texting people telling them there had been a change of plans and that instead of casual formal, I decided to make a costume party. My mother's side is crazy for Halloween, so they were immediately on board. I told my father via text and asked for him to relay the message to Heather and her mother, knowing full well that he would forget or leave it to the last minute. Saturday comes along, guests start showing up, most of them in costumes. Some didn't have the time to get one. We just provided them with fun hats and cheap wigs. Heather, my dad and her mother come like one hour late. As soon as she notices that everyone was either wearing elaborate costumes or weird accessories and she didn't stand out, she lost it. Especially when my fiance came along and told her that her bride dress looked amazing for a cheap costume. She left crying and her mother and my father told me that I was being childish and I could have told Heather myself and not have tasked my father. For those interested, my fiance was dressed as Bubbles and I was dressed as Mojo Jojo. My mum and aunts went as Abba. Other memorable costumes were Luffy and Zoro, Ian Malcolm and, and John Hammond and Jesus. So people were asking OP questions. Some people were saying like, why did you invite her in the first place? OP says, it's one of those weird family situations where not inviting them would have only been more dramatic. You know, when you try pleasing everyone, Plus, I still wanted a relationship with my father, so not inviting Heather and her mum would have made things super difficult and made it so my father would have had to choose. And I kept thinking of it. I noticed that my father wouldn't have chosen me on this scenario, which is why I ended up cutting them off. Someone says, you let her win. Opie says, no. The point of this is to ruin my half-sister's intention. She wasn't just dressed nicely, as some of you put it. She wore a wedding dress to my engagement party. I'd much rather subvert this whole mess rather than her smugly sitting at a table with a wedding dress. Also, some of you are really hung up on the cheap wigs part and ignore literally everything else regarding the party. A minority of our guests wore those cheap wigs. Also, it literally doesn't matter. We had a blast. After she left, I didn't even think of her again until a few days later. I don't regret the costume party. I wish I thought of it earlier, to be honest. Also, I can't believe I have to say this. But the lady on the picture is not Heather. It's also not the dress she wore. I looked for a picture that looked approximately like the dress. To a couple of comments, the filthy DIL says, she'll want to wear it at your wedding too. May I suggest a Renaissance fair theme? <laughs> Sounds fun. Late Nerd says, the cherry on top of this delicious revenge Sunday is how you use your father's general shittiness to work in your favor. Absolutely brilliant. Paul from Atlanta quotes OP saying, especially when my fiance came along and told her that her bride dress looked amazing for a cheap costume and says, so he's a keeper, excellent petty revenge. Gantron says best part is he was in a bubbles costume, lol. <laughs> Great Pop says, I saw your post on am I the asshole first. What you did was so petty, I love it. Please tell me you disinvited them to your entire wedding after that too. OP says, I have officially gone no contact with that side of the family. My father was a spineless slug. <laughs> what the hell? I never looked forward to seeing him and had little love left for him. I'm going to have to use spineless slug in the future, I think. I like that. So, 
the update comes 20 months later and says, I'd planned countless times to update this post. I even asked the mods if it was allowed, but I was too lazy and always stopped halfway through. Lol. Anyway, I keep seeing my post as a TikTok. I also saw an account that pretended to have an update. Oof. Apparently, my husband cheated with my half-sister, my mother exploded, and my grandma is a dog. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Hey, to the update. I got married. It was an eventful and thankfully drama-free day. My father was not in attendance. After my engagement party, I realized that he would never choose me willingly. Even if he loves me, he doesn't love me enough to stand up for me. He constantly allows his wife and daughter to walk over me and even become abusive. So I wrote him a lengthy email from my old school days email account. It detailed my resentful feelings against him and uninvited him from the wedding. Then I logged out because I know myself. I'd be upset with his answer and, and if he wouldn't not answer, I would also be upset. I also blocked him and his family from all access and I went cold turkey, freezing even. I changed phone providers and deleted my social media accounts for a while. He did try to contact me through my mother. She said it was upsetting, so I told her I did not want to know. So I just cut him off and boy, my life improved drastically. We had an amazing wedding. Unhinged things that happened after the wedding. I got a cease and desist letter from my half-sister. It was very vague and weird, but we quickly found out that it was only a Google copy pasta. My stepmother followed me to the supermarket and tried to intimidate me, who apologized to Heather. She made the produce wildly uncomfortable. My father tried to pick me up at work. He was walking next to me while I went to my car. He was trying to get me to go to apologize to Heather and her mum. He said that I should be the bigger person, that I know how both of them are. So I just told him that he must be mistaken because my father is dead. He just stood there as I drove off. Then they started to bother the rest of the extended family. Heather and her mum apparently wanted them to cut me off finally. Which backfired spectacularly because now they are cut off. Which also means that they are excluded from a lot of family events and they weren't looking forward to. Plus, they can't use my uncle's cabin. So Heather's mum had allegedly been at her sister's since the whole breakdown. I don't know how much of this is true. As you know, the toxic gossip train always has to be taken with a grain of salt. I don't know, but I think it's funny. The sad thing is that I don't even miss my father. His absence has made zero negative effect on my life. We did have one more costume party around Halloween, but this time it gave everyone more time and it was even more fun. My mum's side of the family all pitched in. We got a venue and invited a bunch of people. I recommend this totally. I met so many of my cousin's friends who I've kept in touch with. Nothing else has changed. I still have my old job. I'm not pregnant. We have the same old apartment. We did redecorate though. So that is all from me. Not all too dramatic. And in the comments, TKD mum says sometimes the best revenge is just living your best life. Good on you for doing so. Desperate Smile says congrats on improving your life by no longer giving them any space in it. Billy Jane says, what was the fake cease and desist for? Stop holding costume parties. Opie says, her disruptive behavior. I found the template she used and everything if you Google cease and desist letter template. It should be the fourth search result if I'm not wrong. And when the dad turned up and he was walking side by side with OP and... You know, I thought at that point he was going to apologize for his behavior, apologize for what's been going on, etc. Trying to make some kind of, make amends in some kind of way. It may never have happened, but he may have tried. But no, he's still trying to get OP to apologize to the stepmom and sister, which is just absolutely wild. And the initial post is just mad in itself. I don't... What goes through people's heads when they're trying to one-up someone else? Like, I'm going to turn up to their party in a wedding dress. You're going to stand out. You're going to look a right burke. Do they truly think in their minds that, like, I'm going to be the center of attention. Everyone's going to love me. No, you just look like a right tit. But like one of those commenters said, living your best life is sort of like the best form of revenge. I always, I always get that wrong. 
It's something like that. <laughs> we'll go with that. Anyway, what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time is always absolutely incredible. So thank you so much for being amazing. You are amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love. Brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that today will be a good day. Okay, I know that today will be a good day. A, B, C, one, two, three, drink some water, brush my Get out of bed and I stretch. 